Hey everyone, Pastor Brittany here with New Life Assembly. I just wanted to welcome you tonight and we're really glad that you decided to join us this evening for our Connect Night. I wanted to also remind you of the challenge that we're doing weekly. So um, you have 48 hours from now, so the deadline is Friday night at 7 p.m. to memorize your power verse and to send it to me either on Facebook or email it to me. And um, let's go ahead and do that power verse together. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Luke 19, verse 10. So everyone, I hope that you will take the time to memorize this verse and send it to me. Great job on those that have been um, sending them to me each week. And when you send me your video, I will put your name in a drawing for a gift card um, to one of the restaurants, one of the local restaurants. So be on the lookout for that. Um, I will announce the winner. Uh, probably on Saturday morning, so be on the lookout for that. And um, let's go ahead and bow our heads. We're going to open in prayer. Father God, I thank you for this time that we have to come together and to worship your name. And Father God, I pray that you would help our hearts to be ready to receive what you would have us learn tonight. Father, we thank you that you have protected us. I thank you for each one that has joined us tonight, that you would bless them, that you would keep them, that you would bring health um, to, the, to the households, Father God, that you would continue to encourage and strengthen them, Lord. Prepare our hearts for tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, get ready for worship. It's time for Bible trivia. This time, we'll be asking questions about animals. The first question for 100 points. In the Garden of Eden, what animal tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit? Was it A, a lion, B, a rat, C, a serpent, or D, a turkey? That's right, the animal that tempted Eve to eat the forbidden fruit was a serpent. The next question for 200 points. When David was a little boy, what kind of animals did he take care of? Was it A, cows, B, horses, C, pigs, or D, sheep? When David was a little boy, he took care of sheep. For 300 points. Because he prayed to God, Daniel was thrown into a den of what? Is it A, bears, B, lions, C, tigers, or D, vipers? Daniel was thrown into a den of lions for praying to God. Next question for 500 points. In his triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Jesus rode upon a what? Is it A, cow, B, a donkey, C, a horse, or D, a lion? Jesus rode upon a donkey in his triumphal entry into Jerusalem.
That's me. My name is Dr. Travis Jones. My friends call me Arizona. I teach college mathematics at the university. Right now, I'm in the middle of explaining one of the most difficult math equations ever. So as you can easily see, the Pythagorean theorem is not the only way we can achieve mathematical success. When you take the square root of a isosceles triangle and divide it by the area of a satellite, you get 2 plus 2 equals... Anyone? Anyone? Uh, Bueller? Bueller? Uh, 4? Precisely! Alright, that'll be all for today, everyone. See you on Monday, okay? Don't forget about the quiz. Study, study, study. Oh, look. An anonymous letter. I wonder who it's from. Dear Dr. Jones, I know you are much more than just a boring college math teacher. <laughs> boring? That's rude. I have heard all about your reputation as an adventurer who seeks to help those who are in trouble. Well, I am in major trouble, Arizona Jones. If you are interested in helping me, please go to the public library. Go to the nonfiction section, third aisle. There will be a book that is slightly dislodged. Open it up to find your next clue. Anonymous. Oh, that sounds like an exciting adventure, but I can't do this alone. I need to call my trusty assistant to help me out. Hello? That's my assistant. Tall Skinny. I sometimes call him T.S. He's okay with that. He's been my faithful assistant for many years and has helped me solve all kinds of mysteries. Hey, Tall Skinny. Hey, what's up, Doc? <laughs> <laughs> Very funny. Listen, I have a brand new adventure for us. Are you ready for it? Sure thing, Dr. Jones. Where do I meet you? Meet me at the public library. We'll get our assignment there. Got it? Okie dokie, Adachoki. Okay, see you there. Bye bye. So, which book are we supposed to look in, Dr. Jones? Well, the letter said it would be inside a book that is slightly dislodged. Like this one? Oh, you're brilliant. Yes. Now, let's find this clue. Oh, now, that's interesting. Mm hmm. Hello, Arizona Jones. My name is Sue. Sue She. I need your help. My prize goldfish has run away. You see, last week I took my goldfish and his bowl to the beach with me. I wanted to work on my suntan. Well, eventually I fell asleep in the sun. And when I woke up, I saw that two sharks had come to the shore and were talking to my goldfish. They were telling him how the ocean was such a great place to be, that he wouldn't be confined to his small little bowl anymore, and that he could swim freely wherever and whenever he wanted to. Well, whenever we came home, that's all he was talking about. All he would tell me was that he was tired of being cooped up in his little bowl and they wanted to be in the ocean where he could be free. Well, yesterday, whenever I came home from work, his bowl was empty and there was a note floating in the water that said, see you later. I'm desperate to find my beloved Goldie again. Please find him and bring him home safely. Help me, Arizona Jones. You're my only hope. Well, T.S. Looks like we're going to have our work cut out for us if we're going to find this lost goldfish. Yes, indeed. Let's go get a picture of the fish and then start asking some people to see if they have seen him. Great thinking. Let's go. Excuse me, sir. Have you seen this goldfish? Answer to the name, Goldie. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I did. You know, I was down at the park this morning playing frisbee with my son, and I saw a goldfish that looked exactly like that sitting on a park bench. I bet that is him, Dr. Jones. It has to be Goldie. Thank you, sir. Come on, CS. Let's go to the park. Let's go. Hmm, well, it is a goldfish, all right, uh, but how do we know that it's goldy? Why don't we just ask it? Okay, that's a great idea, T.S., but I'm sorry, I don't speak goldfish. No problem, Dr. Jones. I know how to speak fluent goldfish. You speak goldfish? Yes. Let me give it a try. 
Well, Dr. Jones, this is definitely Goldie. But he says that he's not sure about going home. He's afraid of his owner will be mad at him. We'll tell Goldie that his owner is definitely not mad at him. She's just worried and wants him to come home. Okay. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, bloop. Okay, so he said that he definitely learned his lesson. He doesn't want to live on his own anymore. Good. Now let's pick him up and take him back to his owner. Hold on, Dr. Jones. Goody say something. Bloop, bloop. Bloop, 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 bloop. Bloop, bloop. Goody say that please be careful when you are driving your car. He gets a little seasick being flashed around in this little ball. A goldfish that gets seasick? Okay, let's go. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. Yes, ma'am. And he is so happy to be home. And I'm so thankful. How could I ever repay you, Arizona Jones? Don't you worry about it, Mrs. Sushi. I'm just glad that Goldie is right back where he belongs. He's no longer lost. He's been saved. That's right. Oh, and Mrs. Sushi? Yes? He told me he really loves it when you feed him donut, especially the ones with sprinkle. You got it. I miss you so much. I miss you so much. Well, Dr. Jones, it looks like another mission accomplished. Sure does. And you know, that reminds me a lot of the lesson that you are going to learn about today. You're going to learn all about the parable of the prodigal son and how Jesus left heaven to come to earth on a mission to seek and save the lost. Until next time, I'm Arizona Jones. And I'm Toe Skinny, also known as TS. And we'll see you next time we go on a mission. Bye bye now. Fancy city folks and their fancy talk say you haven't seen the beaver out here, have you? Fancy? City talk? Beaver? Yeah, you know, a beaver. Kinda like a dog, but with a big flat tail and buck teeth. Okay, this is getting weirder by the second. I didn't get your name. Uh, that's because I haven't given it yet. My name is Maple. Maple Salback. Your name is Maple? Like the tree? No, like the syrup. My puppy loves syrup in his flapjacks so much he named all of his kids after it. I've got two sisters named Blueberry and Apple and a brother named BP. What does that stand for? Mother Pecan. Yep. The Sawback family is the greatest bunch of lumberjacks this side of the Rockies. Well, lumberjacks and lumberjanes. What in the world is a lumberjane? That's me! A female lumberjack. Now, if you'll excuse me... <coughs> Marty! Marty! Come here, Marty! Who or what is Morty? My special sidekick. Morty, uh, you have... Uh, you must have noticed he's about 10 feet tall, wears a kilt and a tiara, and is invisible. How in the world am I supposed to notice a 10 feet tall beaver when it's invisible? <laughs> you see, the folks need a lot of learning when it comes to beaver spotting. You just listen for him, of course. Does he make some sort of special beaver noise? Nope. Morty plays the banjo. Listen. Did you hear that? No, I don't. That's because it's invisible. We can't be wasting time hunting giant invisible banjo strumming beavers. We're on a mission here. We're here to learn how we help lost people. Oh, that's easy. Oh, I know how to help lost people. When you're lost in the woods, just remember, moss always grows on the outside of a tree. I didn't mean that kind of loss. I'm talking about people that don't have God. When you don't have God leading your life, it's like you're lost. People are lost without God. Hmm. Does God grow on the outside of trees? Maybe that'll help. 
<laughs> no, lost people don't need trees. They need Jesus. Jesus came to earth to, sell, to help lost people, to save sinners. Ah, hmm. Jesus grows on trees. Give people a tree and they'll be saved. No, you don't need to receive a tree or anything else to be saved. You just need to receive Jesus. Receive Jesus and you'll be saved. Besides, Jesus doesn't grow on trees. Are you sure? I saw a bush that kind of looked like him once. Granted, it was night and I was squinting and I was really, really far away. I might, it might have been bear. Hmm. Listen. Marty! Marty! Marty's backstage. Okay. I'll see you later, CD folks. This is Maple Sawback reminding you don't eat wood unless you're a beaver. You'll hurt its feelings and your intestines. Bye bye! What is up you guys? My name is Sid. Sid the Surfer. I come from a righteous place down under. It's called Iowa. And I was raised by dolphins in my grandma's plastic pool. <laughs> anyway, I'm here to teach you guys today's awesome power verse. Today's power verse says, For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Luke 19, 10. That was a gnarly power verse but I need some help from all my rad dudes out there. So all the boys stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Luke 19, 10. Awesome job, guys. You can all take a seat. Now I need some help from the girls out there. Stand up and say it with me on the count of three. One, two, three. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Luke 19, 10. Good job, guys. You can all take a seat. Now, this power verse reminds me of a time where I couldn't find my surfboard named Johnny. I mean, I'm a surfer, and I was completely lost without my surfboard. It's just like how people on this earth are lost without God. But they don't need to worry, because Jesus came to seek and save the lost. They are lost, but they can be found. Just like how I found my surfboard Johnny down at the local tanning salon getting his tan on. Anyway, I need everybody to stand up and help me say this power verse on the count of three. One, two, three. For the Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. Luke 19, 10. Awesome job, guys. You can all take a seat. Well, it's time for me to go catch some waves. I'm Sid the Surfer, and I'll catch you later. Hey guys, tonight we're going to learn about the parable of the lost son. Our story is found in the book of Luke chapter 15, and it's the story that Jesus told to help people understand how much God loves them. There was a father who had two sons. One of the sons, the youngest, approached his father one day and said, give me my share of the inheritance. His son had decided that he would be better off on his own with no rules, no boundaries, no bedtime, no chores. He thought that he would have an amazing life of fun and no worries. The father gave his son what he asked for. The son left his house and he went out to live on his own. He started partying, drinking, and living a very sinful lifestyle. He thought that he had lots of friends. But most of those friends were only hanging out with him because he had lots of money to spend. It, was, it wasn't long before the boy had wasted all of his money on wild and sinful living. He ended up with no money to buy anything to eat, so he got a job feeding pigs. Can you imagine sloshing around in the mud with a bunch of smelly pigs? It was the worst job you can imagine. But he was so hungry that he, even the food that he was feeding the pigs looked good to him. The son looked around at the situation he had gotten himself into and he said to himself, 
My father's servants live better than this. I will return home and beg for the forgiveness of my father and ask him to take me back as a hired servant. I imagine he thought his father was going to be angry with him. He probably expected a long lecture from his dad, if his dad would even talk to him at all. But that's not what happened. As the boy approached his father's house, his loving father, who had been watching and hoping every day for his son's return, saw him coming and he ran out to meet him. He threw his arms around him and he hugged him and he kissed him. He threw a huge party to celebrate and he said, my son was lost, but now he is found. Jesus told that story to help us understand how God feels about us. The father in the story represents God and the lost son represents God, all of God's children who have tried to live their life on their own without God. In your lesson today, we are going to learn that God loves the lost so much that he sent Jesus to seek and save them. Have you ever seen a lost and found box? Have you ever seen one of these? It's a box where you put lost items in it and um, it's called a lost and found box. Sometimes you have them at school, sometimes you have them at the church, sometimes you have, have them different places. Well, kids are always losing things, right? Every year in school, there probably isn't very much in it at the beginning of school, but at the very end of school, there's going to be a box full of stuff. So let's see what we can find in our lost and found bo um, box. Here's a shoe. I don't know how a person can lose one shoe, but there's one shoe. Wouldn't you think that they would notice that they were only wearing one shoe? I think they would. And also I have a pair of glasses. Here's a pair of glasses. Now, I bet the person who lost these is having a hard time um, going outside and being able to uh, drive their car without their sunglasses. Well, I think I also have one more thing in my box, especially right now. I have a pair of gloves in my box. Now these are nice warm gloves when you go outside and I bet they're missing those now, especially since it's so cold outside. Have you ever lost something that was really important to you? What did you do? Did you just say, ah, oh well, I'll just go find another one. No problem. No, <laughs> I imagine you probably searched for it. You probably looked for it until you found what you were looking for. And then, when you finally found the item that was lost, did you say, oh well, no big deal. I doubt it. If you were like most people, you got very excited when you found something you thought was lost forever. Our Bible story today showed us a reaction like that. When the lost son returned, the father jumped up and hugged his son. He threw a party to celebrate his lost son was now found. Jesus told this story to demonstrate God's love for us. We are God's children, but sometimes we get lost too. When that happens, God doesn't give up on us. In fact, the Bible tells us that God sent his son Jesus to seek and to save the lost. That was one of the biggest parts of Jesus' mission here on earth. He came to seek and save the lost. So who are the lost? God created human beings. People are lost without God. God created human beings to be in relationship with him. God gave us the life that we have, and he has a perfect plan for each one of us. That plan includes loving him and obeying his commands. The problem is, sometimes people think that their way is better than God's way. They decide that living in sin would be more fun than living for God. They are a lot like the young son in today's Bible story. Sadly, people who try to live without God end up wandering through life with no purpose. They are lost because they're not in relationship with God, with the one who created them. But God didn't want people to stay lost. That's why Jesus came to earth to save sinners. 
Jesus left heaven on a mission. His mission was to seek and save the lost. This means his mission was to find those who were living in sin and show them the way back to God. Jesus lived a perfect life without sin. Everywhere he went, he told about God's love and ultimately Jesus gave his life by dying on a cross. The reason he did that was to pay the price for our sin. He didn't deserve to die, but he chose to die so that we wouldn't have to pay the price for our sin. Romans 6.23 says, For the payment of sin is death. Perhaps you think, I am so thankful that Jesus came on a mission to seek and save the lost. I know I am lost without Jesus, but how do I become found? How do I become someone that Jesus has saved? Well, I'm glad that you asked that. The Bible teaches us in Romans, 3, or Romans 10 verse 9 that if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. In other words, if I receive Jesus, I will be saved. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you died on a cross for my sins, and I want to live for you for the rest of my life. And instantly your sins will be forgiven. You will be saved from being lost. That's God's plan for everyone. God wants everyone to be saved, and that was the biggest part of Jesus' mission. So why remain lost? You can choose to receive Jesus today. We're going to pray for those who want to receive salvation. If you have said that, Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God, and I believe that you died on a cross for my sins, and I want to live for you for the rest of your life, congratulations, you have just made that, that commitment to Jesus, and you have become a child of God. So I'm going to pray over everyone, and I'm going to pray for you and that you would be a light to your families, your families and your loved ones, maybe even your friends that are not believers, that don't know about Jesus. You can take this message to them and you can share Jesus with them as well. So let's bow our heads and close our eyes and I'm going to pray over you. Lord, I thank you for tonight and I thank you for this opportunity that we have had to come before you and to become found. We thank you, Lord, that you sent Jesus to die on a cross for our sins so that we don't have to die, so that we can live eternally with you. And Father God, I pray that each one watching this tonight, Lord, that you would help them to pray for their family and, and friends that are lost, to be the light, Lord, to be able to share your love with their family and their friends. Father God, I pray that you would give us courage, that you would give us boldness, and that you would give us the words to speak. We thank you for what you're doing, and we thank you for this time that we've had together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys, get ready to uh, wrap up. We're going to do our um, brain drain here in just a few minutes, so make sure you um, go through, do your family devotions together, have that discussion time, and then come back for our brain drain, and um, at the very end, of there's a closing video.
Miracle work, promise keep Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are You are way make Miracle work, promise keep Light in the darkness, my God That is who you are What's up today? Jesus came to save everyone. Jesus came to save the lost, or anyone can be saved by Jesus. The answer is Jesus came to save the lost. What was the name of our hero in the intro verse? Bucky Kentucky, Maine Blaine, or Arizona Jones? The answer is Arizona Jones. What did the young man decide to do in our Bible story? Leave his father's house, follow the rules, or go to school? The answer is leave his father's house. Did his money last very long? Yes or no? The answer is no. What kind of job did he end up getting? Front desk receptionist, garbage man, or feeding pigs? The answer is feeding pigs. How did his father react when he came home? Was he joyful? Did he send him away or he ignored him? The answer is he was joyful. According to our lesson today, people are blank without God, hopeless, lost, or better. The answer is lost. 
According to our lesson today, Jesus came to earth to what sinners? Help, love, or save? The answer is save. According to our lesson today, if I receive blank, I will be saved. Jesus, forgiveness, or presence? The answer is Jesus. Where was our power verse found? Acts 8, 12, Luke 19, verse 9, or Matthew 3, verse 14? The answer is Luke 19, verse 9. Hey everyone, we hope that you enjoyed our lesson tonight about the lost son and that you will take to heart what you've learned tonight. Um, just a reminder that you have 48 hours from now to memorize your power verse for the week and send me a video either on Facebook Messenger or via email. Um, and then your name will go in a drawing for a gift card to a local restaurant. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Make sure that you get your name in there. Make sure you send me your video. Um, great job on everyone that's been doing that. Um, we're going to go ahead and pray to close out. But remember to join us next Wednesday night here online at 7 p.m. All right, guys, bow your heads and close your eyes and let's close in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time that we have had to come together and to worship you. And Father God, even though circumstances are different than they've looked in the past, we thank you that that doesn't stop you from moving. We thank you, Lord, that you are present with us in our homes that you are present with us as we go to school. And Father God, I pray that you would prod your spirit upon each one listening tonight and that has joined us tonight. And Father God, I pray that you would encourage and strengthen them, give them good rest tonight as they go to bed and get ready for school tomorrow, Father God, that you would give them peace, that you would bring health to their families, Lord, and that if anyone is not feeling well, Lord, that you would touch them right now, Father God, and that you would heal them completely. We thank you for your, for your word. We thank you for your presence and your spirit, Father God. And we pray that you would continue to go with us as we go out tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. We'll see you next Wednesday.